Hello, welcome back to my studio. Today we're going to look at some premium artist quality paints and try them out in a painting. Some time ago I did a review on Rembrandt artist quality paints. These are manufactured by a company called Royal Talens in the Netherlands. In that review I was simply looking at the qualities of the paint, the workability, the vibrancy. Today I'm going to put these paints to the test and create a small painting and give you my impressions of using the paint and whether it's going to give you something extra in your next painting. Now to do this I'm going to use one of these little starter boxes and this is what typically a lot of artists would purchase to try out these paints. So I'm going to see what I can do with these. It's quite a convenient little set with white and the primary colors and burnt sienna and some green. But we'll open the box and take a closer look and then start painting. So stick around and see how these paints work out. All right, let's have a closer look at these paints and open the box up. Uh, there you can see six tubes of 15 milliliters oil color, artist quality. And the colors set out on the back here. And it's a very attractive box that comes in, would make a good gift as well. And there are the tubes of paint. We've got titanium white. It says permanent yellow light, permanent red light, permanent matter medium, ultramarine blue, and permanent green deep. Well, let's try it out on some painting. This is the reference I'm using. I'm going to be making the most of the shadows of here, the light on the trees and the shape of this big tree is a central part of this composition as well. Well, I'm going to start off with setting out the colors. Now there's only six colors in this set, but there'll be enough for this painting. And of course I'm going to do a bit of color mixing as well. So you can make a few of your convenience earth colors with these, no problem. Starting off with the ultramarine and a little brush, I'm just getting in a rough and loose composition, drawing it out freely. Just keep the brush or your pencil moving don't sweat over the details don't try and draw it as if you are doing an illustration we're just placing the major shapes and getting the basic composition and then we can go straight into painting the biggest and darkest shapes quite impressed with this ultramarine blue it is very vibrant and strong now mixing a bit of green, a little bit of that uh, cool red into the ultramarine and getting these beautiful transparent dark shapes and getting in the shadow pattern on the road. Traditionally with oils you will start off with the darks. You can do that with acrylics too. And then work towards the lighter colors. Bring in a bit of that yellow to get a dark mid-tone of the greens. A little bit more yellow to slightly lighten up those mid-tones. Keeping white out of it at this stage. Only when I get the, to the lightest light, so I'm going to bring the white paint into the mix. Try and keep the white paint out for as long as possible. Now you can see how the painting holds together on these strong dark shapes. 
they give the strength and structure. A little bit of that uh, cool red to create a beautiful vibrant purples. Just look how powerful that purple color is. That's just ultramarine and the matter. Really deep. Little touch of white and see how that changes and you immediately make that color more opaque. But that's fine for this shadow. In reality a lot of reflected light falls into shadows over here and they can lighten up a little. Now there's a building on the, just on the right hand side. Which as you'll see as the painting develops I'm just going to suggest it's not the focal point so don't put too much strong detail and strong edges into your non-focal point areas. You don't want to attract too much attention. Lovely shadow patterns. It's just beautiful strong transparent shadows with this ultramarine and matter. All right, let's get into some lights. Now I'm going to make up a yellow ochre and uh, with mostly yellow, a bit of red and white, you can get a lovely yellow ochre. And that's a good sign of good paint with lots of pigment. You can see different shades of yellow ochre. And look at that, it is brilliant, strong. Just what you need. I can see I'm going to enjoy these paints because they're going on very uh, strong and buttery. I was expecting a much more oilier paint than this, to be honest. Um, but I have added absolutely no mediums into this paint and it is beautiful to use straight out the tube. I'm using bristle brushes throughout this painting and you can see what an amazing impressionist approach um, these paints can, can really handle that. Good texture going on nice and thick. So if you were going to use an old master approach, you'd probably want to add in a medium, something like liquid perhaps, and get that uh, loose glazed approach. But for this direct impressionist approach, straight out the tube, ready to go. And that's what I like. No fussing around. And getting in these sky colors, a bit more blue up here. Let's get in the brush stroke, put it down, take the brush off, see what it's like. Do you need to adjust the shape? But each brush stroke makes its own shape and I try not to lose that too much. little bit of violet around the edges of the trees to give that sort of rounded blurred edge. Some hills peeking through in the distance making those yellow ochres a little more red. I don't often use tube greens, but I'm using this permanent green and with a little touch of red to it, it just takes out that um, overly bright green, which isn't really consistent with this landscape, as you can see. 
So if your green is too strident, a little touch of red will knock that right out and get you a more natural green if that's what you need. These sort of shady browns, kind of grey, and then I'll add the lights a bit later. Like I said, keeping this building here very loose, just suggestive. And now the blocking in is pretty much done. I'm getting a few directional lines in this. As I said, this building very loosely done, but it's got some directional lines which also help to move the eye to the focal area beyond the tree down the road. So don't hinder the movement of the eye, just help it along. Telephone posts, nice vertical elements are always handy. And they just sort of balance out all the organic shapes of a landscape. So if you look out for them, fence posts, telephone poles, all of that can be useful. And if they're not there, maybe you just add them. Nobody's checking. A few of the lighter middle tones now. This is the second stage of the painting, developing the initial initial shapes. And uh, I, I usually go through this stage fairly quickly. I don't want to lose the spontaneity of the original blocking in. So mix, put the paint down, cooler in the distance, warmer in the foreground. Simple rules like that will look after your color mixing. Try and follow the shapes of objects. A rounded bush, give a shape with the brush that uh, carries that off. can see how versatile this long flat bristle brush is. Small shapes, big shapes, doesn't matter. You can do pretty much everything you need with a number six or number eight bristle brush on a relatively small painting like this. Now I'm painting wet over wet. If that worries you or you get nervous about creating muddy paint, don't do that. Just put the paint straight over with one stroke, like I've just done there, and you have no problem. It's when you go back in and try and fiddle with that brush stroke that you can potentially create muddy color. I must say, I really am enjoying this ultramarine. A little bit of white paint and a bit of matter or red light into that ultramarine and creating these beautiful violets and our shadow blue colors, the purples, amazing. And this yellow, you can see extremely strong. But of course, don't use too much white. Just use enough white to adjust your value. But don't lose your vibrancy of the color. I'm getting some nice warm colors in the foreground. Thick, juicy paint. That's the way I like to do my painting.
As the painting progresses, shapes get a bit smaller. But I'm still using the same size brush for the most part. I, I will use a smaller brush now and then. But never use a small brush and lose the large shapes and strength of your painting. Just getting a bit of information into the shadows. It's quite a large shadow in the foreground, so we want a little suggestion of something in there. A few more shapes and layers in the darks of the tree. And now the painting is nearing completion. A few shapes that I've lost along the way, bringing them back. A little highlight or two in the tree. And uh, just that distant shape there. Getting some cool light in the distance. Nice impasto. Just want to increase that a bit. I really, as I said, love these blue colors, so a few little dots and dashes. I think I'd like to bring a figure into this road as well, so I'll have to just add that in as the last thing. A cloud up in the sky. So when I've still got paint left on the palette, I like to try and use it all up. Telephone lines. Take the eye along as well. And that little figure, and we're just about done. All right, time to sign off and have a look at the final painting. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that demonstration and it gave you a bit of an idea about whether Rembrandt artist quality paints are right for you. These are great paints to use no matter what uh, tools you use, brushes or painting knives. I think these paints are fantastic if you're going to be painting perhaps a fine brush and creating a portrait or a really luminescent type of painting where you want to work in thin layers and build up the painting. But you can also paint with impasto and use an impressionist approach as well. So they are versatile, they are top quality and they will give an extra punch of color. So if you're confident with painting clean color notes and getting the best out of the color then there's no reason why an artist quality paint like Rembrandt will not work for you. You should be able to produce beautiful and vibrant paintings. All right, that's enough talk and now I'm sure you want to go out and try some painting yourself. Until next time, cheers for now. Mm -hmm.